Hello and welcome to the From the Spirit World podcast, a legendary avatar of the Last Airbender and the Legend of Korra podcast for OverlyAnimated.com. This is the From the Spirit World rewatch, the definitive avatar fans rewatch from the biggest avatar fans you know. We'll be reflecting on Avatar and Korra almost 20 years later after being huge fans of the show while it originally aired. I am your host, Dylan, and today I'm joined by Delaney. Hey, y'all. And Jeff. Hello. We have reached episodes 15, 16, and 17 of the book one Avatar we watched that we're going through, uh, Bato of the Water Tribe, The Deserter, and The Northern Air Temple. These may have been the three episodes of Avatar that I remembered the least. <laughs> so it's an interesting grouping. Now that does not speak to their quality. I'm just saying like uh, so, some isolated, for the most part, episodes here. I think it's pretty interesting. Um, I'll get uh, Delaney and Jeff's takes on that, what they remembered of these episodes. Uh, but uh, make sure you check out all of our FTSW Rewatch podcasts. You can search for From the Spirit World or Overly Animated anywhere to subscribe to either of those feeds or the dedicated FTSW Rewatch feed to get all these podcasts. And we're also on video, which you can go to youtube.com slash overly animated to watch the video version of this, but it is just fine as well if you're listening on audio only. Um, we're going to be in full spoiler territory for all of Avatar and Korra throughout this rewatch, regardless of what episodes are being discussed in the podcast, so be warned for future spoilers. And you can send us questions and comments to read on upcoming podcasts to podcast at overlyanimated.com or leave a uh, comment wherever you're listening. So let's uh, jump right in as we're deep into book one here. Um, Bato, oh, well, I guess I can introduce the episodes more. Bato of the Water Tribe, directed by Giancarlo Volpe, written by Ian Wilcox. The Deserter, directed by Lauren McMullen, written by Tim Hedrick, his first episode, and The Northern Air Temple, directed by Dave Filoni, written by Elizabeth Welsh, her first episode as well. Delaney, uh, what do you? How much? I, I'm curious. How much of these did were you? Did you remember going in, and what was your rewatch experience like with these three episodes? So I remember Bato. I remember the ice dodging. I did not remember mm. that Aang hid the message, and I was like, "No, Aang, don't do that." No. <laughs> And then um, I also like, I mean, obviously I know who June is and uh, is Nyla. Yeah, they don't say they her don't name say her in this name. episode though. Um, and so I like obviously remember them. I didn't realize this was when it happens. Um, mm. So that was, I was like, oh, and then and you would think I'd remember something like the perfume bending, but I did not. Um, I, I remember the deserter, like all of that. I like, I don't know why. Okay. Very familiar with that episode, so I was not. None of that was a shock to me. Um, fun fact: Dylan texted me the other day and was like, "Just finished the Deserter," and I was like, "What's that?" Like, because I just Dylan watched. I, so you would think that you wouldn't have remembered I, the episode I, if you didn't know what it exactly. was. Exactly, but see, Dylan watches things, and I was like, "Oh, maybe Dylan's watching something like a movie or something." And Dylan just like sent me this like, "Are you for real?" emoji, and I was like, "Oh, Zhang Zhang, I know who that you is." <laughs> episodes we're podcasting on like tomorrow it's fine i watched yeah. them all like i binge watched like 12 episodes yesterday yeah so how how was the how was the big binge it was great actually i had a great time so i watched um nine and ten separately like the other day i hate jet um and then i watched everything else just boom what are your highlights from the from all the oh episodes? i mean they're all just so good uh okay the fortune teller was actually a highlight big shock yes His you were you were complaining yes. about it the entire time. Historically, I hate that episode. Like big complaints. I hate Jet. Um, that episode was more tolerable this time, and also I don't think they made him skeezy enough in the live action. Um, yeah, he teller, was better. He was more. Yes. Was better. Fortune teller. That should have been an episode like that. I was completely overlooked in the live action, and it was necessary. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I did remember. I mean, I remember stuff from the fortune teller, and I just just. Look, anything that was a threat to Katang just like set me off when I was younger. So this was it was very, there was no threat to Katang in this episode. I don't know why. It was a Katang. It episode. was. I don't look. I was just mad at Mang, even though she's really cool and it was fine. We love we love Lucy, which is always you know, that yes. is quality. Yes. Anyway, what about these three episodes? I, What's your favorite? They're great. Which which one's, which one's my favorite? Mm -hmm. I guess I guess it's the Deserter. I will say so. The Northern Air Temple. This is quite possibly only like the second or third time I've ever seen the Northern Air Temple. I think it's something I missed originally, like when the show was originally airing. And I, because I remember being like, what is everyone talking about? I don't know. And so, like, I, I just am not as familiar with that episode. So, this is like kind of a rare, like, episode for me. So, it was, it was nice. I enjoyed it. 
Um, I did remember, though, like, I was like, oh, isn't it just, like, the, the other temple? And then I was like, no, wait, the, the, the secrets are in the, the chamber. That's, he's going to open it, and they're going to know he's a traitor. Like, I remembered that before mm. it happened. Okay. Good stuff from Delaney. We'll get more reactions as we continue to talk. Jeff, how about you? Uh, what did, well, I was rewatching these episodes, and uh, if you want to throw in any memories, uh, what you remembered from them as well. Uh, I particularly loved these three episodes. I think if I was to pick three contiguous episodes from season one, like the the, the top three contiguous, these would be it. Fall, uh, close second would be the ones prior, uh, the Storm, Blue Spirit, and yeah. Fortune Teller, because I also really liked Fortune Teller. Oh yeah. The oh three, good, good, uh, good. We have everyone loves Fortune. Well, I did. So, so I did watch. So I watched all these all through. Yes. No. Going from the Blue Spirit to the Fortune Teller and the Storm, like it was great. Just I had a great. Mm-hmm. What do you What do you like about these ones, Jeff? Uh, uh, the uh, the choreography of the fight scenes was was pretty top notch for me. In fact, I uh, I remember these episodes quite well, mainly because I watched them over and over when I was making AMVs. Oh, so, okay. Really. You have yeah. to. You have to checks out. So, oh, uh, although ugly CGI the, tanks. Yeah, CGI tanks. <laughs> the, the 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 middle part of the deserter. Actually, the the, the first two thirds of the deserter. I do not. I remember not remembering very well when I first rewatched it. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I wonder what what's happening here. Um, I remember that last part of it pretty quite well, but uh, yeah, so. Nice. Really, what were your highlights from the three? Uh, highlights would be um, just the uh, yeah Zuko Ang at the Abbey would be top. Good. Uh, it was so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I was getting uh, mad at her. I was like, "You leave Appa alone. You stop that." Appa, Appa held his Appa's own. Appa's like, though. "I'm gonna eat mm. you." Appa mm-hmm. was good. Yeah, when he's like, breathes steam through his nose, it's just like, yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah, but uh so okay, looks like you guys remember them a little more. But yeah, Deserter in particular was like uh I just so once I start watching, obviously I remember what's what's up. But going in, I just nothing was top of mind with Deserter. Like I just remember Zhang Zhang. I didn't remember that was Katara healing origins, like and that's a huge thing. Like well, I didn't remember anything from Deserter. I remember like her getting hurt and that's like the whole I'll never been fire again. So I I think I think maybe just because it's never fall I if I Correct. Deserter is never followed up on in any way. I guess Ang vows never to firebend again. That's probably followed up on. And Katara healing. So, okay. I mean, you know, but the specific characters and, like, locations no. of the episode. So, for some, yeah, so Deserter is just, like, you know. Bato, I, I, you know, I agree. I remember the fight scene at the end. In my mind, Ang and Zuko at the well is what I associate with season one zuko Ang pursuit. Like I like that is like the iconic fight scene with the with them at that well. Mm-hmm. Um and then Northern Air Temple I remember, but I don't remember the specifics, I guess. Um to, to and I didn't remember there's a huge battle scene in that that I, I, that was kind of shocking to me. I didn't. Um but uh that doesn't mean they're bad or anything. In fact, I think Deserter's pretty fantastic of an episode. Um very weird. Very, very weird. In fact, I would say these three episodes, um, this honestly include put Fortune Teller in here as like the post mid season finale, as we talked about last podcast. Like the Blue Spirit and uh, Storm kind of function as a mid season finale. Fortune Teller to Northern Air Temple, these are such weird one one off episodes. Um, it reminds me a lot of the second half of book three with these, yeah. uh, these kind of field, Zuko field trips, just these, uh, just very different type of episodes all from each other. Uh, so I don't know. That's, it, that's pretty interesting. I mean, maybe book two, I mean, book two has the more connected second half. Maybe the first half will have these type of weird one-off episodes, but, um, this is an interesting period of Avatar for me where we are right now, pre-Northern, uh, Water Tribe. Um, Deserter, I think is pretty great. Uh, it's a very weird, very serious episode for the most part. I mean, there's some, some humor stuff in there, but Zhang Zhang is, uh, just a very serious character. Um, but I was uh, very much liking what it was going, what it was going for. I think it's very well written. I really love Katara healing stuff. Bato and Northern Air Temple. I think these are good episodes. I think they're both flawed in the exact opposite way. Um, Bato, incredible fight scene at the end. I think the character stuff before the fight scene is not so great. Uh, the Ang hiding the letter stuff is so annoying. Um, and uh, I would argue that 
Bato and then coming in is like a re-exploring water tribe culture with Katar and Sokka. And I think it largely is a missed opportunity. I'm not sure they'd spent a lot of time on that. In fact, Aang is kind of the focus there, yeah. which I think is not the correct way to do that. Um, but we'll we'll talk more about that. And then Northern Air Temple, I really like the character stuff. The fight scene is good at the end. It's just like very long and I don't have as much emotional investment in what's happening as opposed to like the the Zuko Aang fight scene in, in Bato. Um but anyway, the, all, I mean, you know, so all, all three of these episodes have a lot of, of highlights, very interesting ones, a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. I'm not sure uh, how much like I'll, I'll, I'll try to dredge some some topics out of it. But considering they're like weird one offs, not a lot of interconnected kind of topics to really get into, like high level topics. Um, but I do think they all function as more of an exploration of the world. It's like I think their their primary primary goal here is like expanding the world building at this point in the show. We're getting more into Northern Water Tribe stuff in in Bato. Deserter is our first look into anything Fire Nation and it's very striking what what we see. Um and then Northern Air Temple getting kind of more into air stuff, how it functions in the modern world. So I I've I've loved how season one has functioned world building wise. I really think I've been saying this a lot, but I think I didn't appreciate at the time how well this season builds up all of the lore the world the characters their backstories i just even even in the second half of book one here i think they're doing such an incredible job with with all of that especially the build-up like i don't think you, it was hard to appreciate especially you know growing up and then mm-hmm. the wait between seasons but like the like really watching all of this and like the like you know we watch the deserter and then we don't even get to fire we don't you know we get to book three fire and it's like you know and, and even then like zuko doesn't join right away like it's Mm-hmm. there's a lot it's kind of interesting how it all ties together and yeah i wonder how deserto if we if it's top of mind heading into book three well we'll think of that but it but really we'd like see nothing other than zuko iroh and the i guess some of the storm flashbacks of fire culture we um, see also build bending in the storm i did not remember that and i was shook yes yeah i know i kind of forgot about that too we got the origins of the lightning bending um yeah, what's uh, which which episode do we want to get? I mean, Bato has a lot of highlights. To be fair, we can kind of go through some some high high level topics here, one by one. Uh, June is uh, is is here. The fan favorite character. We we just talked about her on the Netflix Avatar show where she didn't do a lot, but great portrayal in general of the character. Um, Delaney, what do you think of revisiting June? Uh, June's fun. Um, I really do think they gave it was a very faithful adaptation of her because I mean really she's she doesn't really do that much in the show mm-hmm. so I think they did a pretty good job in the Netflix adaptation I mean it's and also a lot of her lines are just word for word what happens in the show like make it your ways and she she had some funny lines I forgot about yes um, so we uh we got uh angry boy and uncle lazy that's okay. good um, she's t- talking about uh, teasing Zuko. Your girlfriend run off, uh, run off on you, showing her the necklace. Yeah, and she's like, she's yeah. too pretty for you, which is like so funny. I, and also, she's too pretty for you. Yeah, I, so funny. <laughs> so this is your girlfriend. No wonder she left. She's too, way too pretty for you. Like, I forgot I about all this hidden Zutaras. This episode is filled with zo- hidden Zutara. Let's be. Oh right. God. Ugh. Um, I like the the yeah. way they like backtrack through all their locations and characters yes the game yes. can see miyuki did you get in trouble with the fire nation again i know where's I, my secret episode where <laughs> what what did she do the first time like i, I know, know we need it's to know important. and then we got fortune teller care to hear your fortune a- handsome to uh iroh <laughs> and he's like and he's like there's only one big mystery left and i'd like to keep it that way yeah uh i don't I, think I, that I, old iroh like calm down a little bit we don't really, yeah, we don't know exactly when this happens yet, uh, but uh, after the show. Um, it's, it's big Iroh, uh, you know, romantic feelings, if you want to call it that episode. Uh. I don't really, yeah, well, that's true. I will, I, I will say, like, I don't think his flirting is as egregious as, like, people make it out to be. I mean, he's being creepy, but, like, it could be worse. I forget that he was creepy before the whole like the tongue didn't hit you, Uncle. Like him, like he was he was kind of creepy in the beginning of the episode too. Yes. Um. But yeah, I don't know, Delaney. Do you think that holds up in a modern context? I feel like he's creepy, but like he's an old man. Like he's it's like a flaw. It's like a flaw. Like he sure. Right. Like, and whatever. also, like I mean, not to, like June is an adult. Like, is it creepy? But it's not like I don't. I like 
in the history of animation and like anime and stuff like there this is like yeah, well there's worse, worse worse stuff in anime uh, yeah i guess like, i guess maybe the show plays it for laughs whereas yeah, uh it's great but then also at the same time june has a lot of agency and you do not mess with her she'll kill you so like that's a thing yeah. which yeah, obviously he true. was taking advantage granted he was literally just laying there while she was on top of him like it, he it's not like he was yeah he, weird move I he could have been way weirder about it but like oh he sure for sure, sure. but like i think it's i mean it's not great does it age? Was was that stuff still fun? I think it was still. I guess it's still funny. And it's funny, so. especially because Zuko like calls him out on it, and he's like, "Shh." That, that is, yeah. You see, June realize. Yeah, that's true. She's like, I'm like, she, you know, she got up and like beat him up afterwards, like yeah, probably, <laughs> probably. And then like you know, and then he like steals the perfume. Like he's just like he's just this weird old too. man, and he does weird old man things. <laughs> Yeah, we're fully on. We're fully in quirky Iro territory. Yeah, we were talking about earlier. Iro wasn't as. But no, uh, I do not condone or... old men creeping on young women. But like this. Yeah, I, th- I don't think the show is either. No, so, you know, it's it's yeah. Anyway, Jeff, uh, did you like seeing June? I did. Yeah. Um, I thought, uh, and I remarked on this earlier that in the scene where she's in the bar, you can tell that they didn't work a whole lot hard on the, the the models of all the extras. I copied a few, and then there's one scene where someone in the background is literally just a smiley face on a blob. Of, it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty funny when Jeff sent it. I was like, I was dying a little bit. So Definitely posted did some repeat character. Well. That, that's a common thing in, in animation. We, Delaney and I uh, talk about Miraculous Ladybug, <laughs> notorious bad. for that. It's really bad, um, Ladybug. Like, really, really bad. It is funny that Avatar, yeah, d- did that a little bit. I, it's, I don't think it's noticeable most of the time, so I think they do a pretty good job Thanks. with uh, with that. But, oh, yeah, the, the bar, too, is that's a fun scene. She's, like, arm wrestling when we, when we see her. Also, guy looks like... Yes, he looks like Ra- was it Ryu, Ryu. Is street it? Fighter. She's she's mm-hmm. arm wrestling oh, okay. Street Fighter, which I didn't obviously <laughs> did not notice the very first time I watched this episode. It stood nice. out to me immensely when I watched. I was like, I need to remember to say this. I thought it was funny. I typed down in my notes Mortal Kombat, but I I like I know it's not that one, but it's one of those. Yes, yeah, it's one of them. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I was like, I was like, that's he's the guy. I didn't notice that this time. That's nice, though. No, it's literally, that's who he is. It was really funny. Like, they like they totally did that just to... They're like, who's going to notice? Ha, ha, ha. Nice. Uh, how about Bato? What do we think of seeing Bato again? Or, I mean, not again. For, He's such a like, non-character. Not a lot just... here. I don't remember how much he does later, but, uh, I, yeah, I don't think he had a ton to do here. Like, he's just the embodiment of the water tribe it's also so like watching the episode when they were like oh my god it's just like the water tribe in here i'm like yeah this is like your your cell at the the abbey this is kind of weird that you made it look like this like he's got his guest room his cell at the abbey yeah, it's kind of weird like he made it look like a tent i don't know like obviously you can make it look like home that's fine but like i just think it was weird yeah jeff any thoughts on bado or the water tribe stuff in this episode mm. Uh, I mean, what you say about it'd be cool to have a, more of a view into water tribe culture that that resonates. Uh, but yeah, I didn't really react much to him as a character. I think I think the next time we see him is Day of Black Sun, right? I, if I recall, I can't remember. Well, yeah. When do we see Hakoda? Like, oh, well, let's not spoil it. I don't remember how this whole Hakoda plot line goes. I know, I know, we keep the map here. We're going to join them again. I don't remember if it's until Day of Black Sun or it happens before. I um, don't even. Uh, that's the thing, Bato. Like, Bato's literally not a character. It must happen before Day of Black Sun. I'm, I'm, I know I'm being dumb, but uh, yeah. No, I don't think you are. Granted, I will say I'm. There's like a like there's kind of like a black hole in like the beginning of book two where I'm like I have no idea what mm-hmm. happens. There, yeah, so, there's going to be some some interesting ones coming up. Um, yeah, we got the the stew. That was the only thing that I remember. Yeah. I, I noticed this time that uh, Momo tasted it and also did not like it. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Yes. Um. Also, we you know this is like this one scene. Just like every fanfic ever, it's like Aang is like, no nope, animal furs are bad, and then like stewed sea prunes are in every fanfic ever. Yes. Yeah. There's not there's not a ton of that stuff to go on. I think so. Yeah. No. I do remember that is a, it is a recurring thing. Um, I want to talk about the Abbey uh, because this is my pick for the most random location in Avatar. Also, I, like, what are, so they make perfume. What are they like? I had no, mem- they, like, I had no is- memory of the Abbey. Also, these are Christians. And do we ever see any like Christians again in Avatar? Um, 
not that like that. I mean, there are Christians in Asia, so like it's you know. But uh, it's this. This is so random to me seeing everything. So like happening. they, so like you know what we've seen so far in Avatar is this. Also, I was like, this is an Abbey. Like I was shook. It you know we we have we we don't like I, mean, I don't know we kind of worship or at least we respect spirits of like the natural world, and you know the Avatar who is basically a god. So. And, you know, the only monks and, you know, nuns we had, you know, were the air nomads. And then it's like, okay, what are we doing here? Like, what? They're like, we make perfume. Okay, but, like, what is your purpose? Yeah, <laughs> like, what, what is their, I mean, obviously, I'm not saying they're literally, like, religious. We don't know the details of their, you know, religion here. Right. And you're like, I'm, a, this is an abbey. I'm like, this, you need to tell me some things. Like, yeah. you know, if they had been like, this is a temple... I, see, it's just weird. Like, we have, like, the, you know, we have, like, the fire stages. So we know what they do and, like, the point of them is. Yeah. I, I tried looking at the Avatar wiki. I feel like there's not a lot on the. Uh, I mean, this is literally it. I don't think we ever get anything like this right. ever again. Does that, it, that's like... why I'm like, these episodes are random. What a, what a random location for the. It, it honestly doesn't matter. Like, the well at the Abbey is the most uh, important part for the <laughs> fight scene. Um, yeah. But, uh, it seems like the. Uh... They they made them make perfume because the plot demanded it at the end. Like, oh, we can like yeah. jump well, perfume. That's fine. Anyway, but it's interact like... with the sheer shoe, yeah. yeah. Which is so which is interesting. And maybe yeah, that I, 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 I guess I guess like nuns do like have a specialty sometimes. They like make something. So I think that's like based in real life. Yeah, well, you know, and you would have um, you know, monks, they like brew beer. Like, yeah, that's yeah like stuff a like that, right? That's yeah. a whole th and that's fine. But I'm like, why are you here? What are you are you the order of like what i need to know <laughs> like what like yeah with stuff like it? obviously there's stuff early on in avatar and this is like late for early on but still early on like where they don't exactly have everything fleshed out so they're like i wonder what their vision was with the abbey if they planned on this being part of something larger or if it was just like a counterpart to, to seeing monks and you know yeah. they didn't really yeah, I don't. I, you know, I it, it's 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 kind of hard to to say for it's like it's like to me it was like seeing those uh, random other avatars in uh, in one o three that are like not actually real now. Um, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm being too harsh, but it, it's 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 fi fi fine enough location um, and uh, really just uh, facilitates the the fight at the end. Well, maybe we can um, explore in the future with because we are getting more stuff and to be kind of interesting is because. You know, there are people, well, it's like even Sokka, he's like, do you really believe in that, that reincarnation stuff? And, like, the show very much is like, this is real, this happens, and then it's like, okay, well, what does the wider world believe? Obviously, the Fire Nation, their entire dogma is like, we have to kill the Avatar and we can't let him be reborn because that would defeat the purpose of everything we've been doing. But, like... Yeah, it's it's something. I mean, we did uh, probably several mini casts on religion and Avatar yeah. in the. Uh, so I think this has been covered. If you want to look in the podcast feed to see what uh, we previously said about this, but that's this is an interesting topic to track as we go along here in Avatar. Um, can we talk about the letter hiding the letter? Um, Boo. Boo! Yeah, Boo. So everybody hated that. Boo! Okay, I forgot that we started out. It's not so. First of all, hiding information is already a, a trope that's annoying. Yes. But the, the, it, the, it starts out with, the, the, in my opinion, the most annoying trope in all of yes. television, yes. which is character uh, leaves before they finish hearing, yes. overhearing something, and they don't get the full picture. So we were combining okay. two of so annoying tropes. Like, well, my thing is, like, I think... I don't blame Aang for hiding the message. Like, it's not like a horrible, terrible thing on his character, but... Yeah combining it like it would have been enough that he left and was upset and that they could have dealt with that and like had an emotional heart to heart as opposed to getting mad stomping off and then being like you know what let's go back like there was like, there, it's very like, dramatic no yeah. yeah it's really dramatic and there really doesn't feel like a solution like well let, we'll talk about the impetus for that i think that's at least interesting what they're attempting to do with do you know um, but the letter, the hiding the letter thing, I feel like we've seen this in other shows as well. Delaney, I remember this from, uh, season one of Kipo, um, in the Age of Wonder Beasts. We have, uh, so this is, this is something, I forgot that it happened in Avatar, so maybe that's why a bunch of other shows do it as well. Uh, or maybe it's just a classic trope. Um, 
And so uh, I don't. I, yeah, my biggest issue with with it, like I said, is just that it puts the focus on Aang, whereas other episodes, like I mentioned before, Imprisoned does a great job of making Aang a side character to focus on Katara. Here, the, I feel like Katara and Sokka should be the focus, but yeah. it is about Aang. Um, and I, you know, I think it's kind of interesting Aang's flaws here and his uh, insecurities about you know Sokka and Katara leaving him. I think that is kind of interesting. There's there's a ton of interesting stuff here. You know, I think it just kind of comes together through kind of annoying tropes and stuff like that. You, you can also tell like oh, sorry. Uh, you can also tell like he's he's not used to not being the main character. Like he introduces mm-hmm. the obvious like oh I'm, I'm anything I can do I'm happy to do it. and then nope. Sokka and Katara doing their thing. That that that's a, that's an interesting concept too, right? Like Aang, how in terms of how he, that is uh, with him being the Avatar and how he's coming to terms with that, and how he's like the main focus usually. I think I guess I would have liked the episode to comment more on that type of thing. Well, so I want to see how much the show does with that type of thing. That is inter- That's a good point though, Jeff. Delaney. Well, I just I think they they like we want to introduce a little bit more drama and like you know we're really trying to bond these characters and we've had you know a lot of bonding. I don't know. It just feels a little sloppy. Like, I just don't think, I don't know. Like, I feel like they have driven, you know, we need to get Aang to the North Pole. Like, there's a reason we're doing this. It's really important. But then it also, it's like, okay, but like, why though? Like, are we really that bonded? Are we really family? Are we? Well, so that, you know, that's kind of the big point of what we're going for. Though. We get the renewed found family yeah. um, at the end. Um, yeah, they just, so... It's we we, we it tried it. We have this. It's definitely interesting. I don't think it's a bad thing. Oh, I I agree. It's ambitious. it's definitely something. It's, it's we quick. Explore some something. I'm tracking. Here's a high level topic. Uh, how it does Avatar move too fast? Is it trying to do too much in short amounts of time? I think this is something I've been kind of pretty eagerly. Uh, in in some case, I'm we're heading into the book one finale and ep- episodes. I revere more than almost any i've ever seen and i'm this that's the aspect i'm dreading is like will that be too fast that last this last episode of season one that's the thing that i'm on lookout for um but i you know i think we these episodes all these episodes have interesting relationships with moving too fast through things some things we move fast through uh, and it's like fine um sometimes it's like we would have liked to have spent more more time here and if we're Um, worried about like the perception of speed don't worry because we've already seen the netflix live action show it's true you're right they do they're just like new it's true it's yeah well that was the thing that was most interesting to me about the prospect of the netflix show i talked about was like more time to spend with the care and you know i don't think they necessarily utilized it well but that is like the biggest you know talk about avatars format it being animation like in 2005 like limited technology i think the show's done a great job with all of that um, I mean, like this, this episode, Bato, obviously it's animated by DR movie. The faces look like worse than the following episode. Um, we talked about that a bunch already, but they, it, it, it's, it's overall uh, animated beautifully. I feel like, um, the biggest format constraint to me is like the 22 minutes, which is really, uh, less than, you know, like it's, and them trying to do so much in that time with these individual stories, I guess that is the downside to being this like and having uh, like the Zuko uh, pursuit. Like we have to have this A B. Yeah, we put yeah yeah we t- we talked about the A and B plots. Um, so I think that that has been a little bit of a struggle sometimes since in book one. Overall, I've been super impressed by book one. I think if you want to get into criticisms, it hasn't necessarily handled runtime super well. I'm interested to see how if that improves in book two. Looking you know looking back on it. Um. But uh, we, we anyway, we have these Sokka flashbacks in this episode, and we we saw we see like young Sokka uh, with Hakoda leaving. We don't know. I don't think we know the name Hakoda yet um, from this from this episode. No, at one point he does he, when he's introducing them to like the head of the Abbey. They're like, "This is Koda's children." Okay. Okay. So he says Koda. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think he says Hakoda. I think he says Koda. Interesting. Um. Uh, the and and we they try to relate uh, Sokka's pain of uh, his dad leaving and him being left alone to what they would be doing to Aang. That uh, um, and that resonated. Uh, I I like that bit. That was very soft. I like that. I think Bado talks about like in addition. This is what Delaney's saying with them, like maybe trying to 
put a bunch of stuff together. But Vado talks about that's the wolf who's the pain of leaving his pack, right? <laughs> yeah. So we're trying to do a lot of stuff here. Uh, so I, I like the relating the young Sokka with the people leaving to Aang's pain and that being them found family. I think the wolf stuff was probably too much. Also, it was all too quick. And it was kind of like trying to do a lot of things at once. You know, I, to me, that's Bado is like, this is an episode with a ton of great ideas and good stuff in there. It's just like not necessarily all executed in the most amazing way. Except also, in- it's kind of like flip flops because at first they're like, well, we can't really wait for this message. Like, it doesn't matter when the message arrives. They're like, we can't do this. We have to get to the North Pole. Mm. Granted, obviously, it's not great what Aang did, but, like, Sokka also was like, oh, my God, this is the... I'm leaving. Like, okay. They also react. Yeah, it is true. Uh, yeah. He's with Sokka. Yeah. But. Okay. On the other end, here's things that I thought the episode did do very well. The the fight... Uh, we talked about the fight scene with the well, uh, with uh, Zuko. This is, like, the conclusion of our Zuko has Katara's necklace arc, I guess. Um, and uh, a- I, I just thought this fight was, like, so frenetic um and like this is the property damage <laughs> true um, it was sad seeing like the abby's door get knocked down once with the shoe shoe and then <laughs> three scenes later knocked down again yep yeah. yeah. so sad uh it's just right. you know ang evading around the well going inside the you know well all i i loved all that yeah to me iconic fight scene for sure um, it's also really funny because he like launches him out and then zuko just like falls over here mm. he's just like oh after getting launched out of the well. Yeah, and then he, like, poses, and we get to, you know, the, that type of shot. Um, the Appa involvement, great. So, yeah, I, I oh, love yeah. it. Fighting is 10 out of 10. Were they on the rooftops in this fight? I Even mm-hmm. though I just yes. watched it. Yeah, that, that was great, too. Yeah. So, to me, yeah, for, for whatever reason, I'm like, oh, early Aang and Zuko fights were really good. Remember when they, in my in my mind, the image of them on the well and on the rooftops and stuff. So, I guess credit to this episode. Yeah, I feel like this ends up. Uh, long fight. I think it goes on a little too long. Hmm. That's how I felt about Northern Air Temple. So maybe... I do agree with that also. It's also because the CGI tanks are hideous. <laughs> and every time they spin around, yep. I like want to die. They also brought the CGI door back again. I know, God, <laughs> why, why? <laughs> we didn't need the CGI door. And they make you watch. They're like, all right, Ooh. let's do it again. Ooh, whatever we do. I think they probably just reused it. One hundred percent. Well, they had to. Right? There's yeah. no way they didn't. Yeah. Anyway, the other thing I thought was really fun was the Katang at the end of the episode. We get the necklace. Um, oh, z- I can Aang- give you something. Like, shut up, Aang. First, first of all, we get June teasing Zuko about Katara being uh, Zuko's girlfriend. And then uh, Aang gets the necklace back during the fight. And then I forgot about this Katang scene, but how could I? It's iconic. Is uh, oh. she? He gives the necklace back to Katara. What is it? Zuko wanted me to give you this. Um, and then uh, he gives, he, she gives him the kiss on the cheek. Uh, give, give this, give Zuko this kiss. It's so her, great. Right? Like, uh, 10. I mean, Aang blushing. Thumbs, it's so good. Twiddles his thumbs. What a I- iconic scene to me i forgot it was here it's a so plus. good love it They're- uh delaney here's what i want to talk about quickly with with katang was um now that we're towards the you know i don't think there's gonna be a ton of katang in the last three episodes other than the hug at the end um we've on overly animated we've been recently talking about like ship animation ships relationships in a historical context and um, we've said that, like, oh, looking back, Katang wasn't actually that well handled by the show. I mean, it was good, but it wasn't amazing. Like, it's more important to us than it is amazingly presented. That's what we've said. Um, now, to be fair, we're going on the backs of two um, incredible couples with uh, Adrian Marinette and Luz Amity from Ladybug and Owl House. Um, that being said, Watching season one so far with the handling of Katang, I got to say, I have been impressed. I, I did not remember that it was pretty well presented throughout many episodes. You know, we're coming off the fortune teller, which is obviously a major Katang episode in addition to Kyoshi Warriors. But we have this moment at the end of Bato, which I think is really great. We have some other... Um, good Katang moments that we've talked about, but also just their not necessarily even romantic relationship, but their bonds. Yes. Uh, I think it was, is in the, even all of these three episodes is very well presented. I mean, we see uh, in Deserter him hurting her and the like visceral reaction Aang has to that, you know, it's that he's hurting the person that he cares about the most, right? That's kind of the whole concept of, of what's happening at the end there. And I think that that, 
Um, you know, I, I forget about even stuff like that, stuff like in the Northern Air Temple, the moment that stood out to me was Aang reacts so terribly to the temple being desecrated and Guitar is like, I really understand where Aang's coming from. You know, you I, like, I love that moment. I love that. I really feel their connection. Yeah. All throughout throughout this entire season, I I kind of I guess I forgot that aspect. I'm just looking back on the romantic moments, which aren't so plentiful. But I feel like these two characters bond. Uh, I've I've been very very impressed with it in book one. No, I think um, and I think this is, shows a real weakness in Korra that I think Korra fails to establish. Honestly, the like Mako Korra Bolin, like I think they do a re- they do a really poor job of establishing friendship because they go straight. Mm. triangle but in avatar which i think the storm is a great example of this bond and like one Katara is just an incredibly empathetic person and it helps when you're talking to someone who's not your obnoxious brother who you're gonna like throw off a cliff and you know she really she wants to understand him and she doesn't she doesn't blame him for things he's done and 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 it goes both ways like ang is really i mean obviously (laughs) Katara gets really mad but like you know he's being he's trying to be empathetic and like help her with her bending and he knows you know it was she he knew she was really tore up about her necklace and he tried to make her a new necklace and then he got the necklace back and they're also um they also like gang up on Sokka which I think is like something that we don't appreciate enough that they like like you know they're like lol at Sokka like they're just clowning on him all the time which is great it's great I forgot good points Lenny and last episode but makes Katara a necklace. Then right, the episode immediately after gives the necklace back to her. Um, mm-hmm. I guess we don't get don't get to appreciate the necklace Aang made for long. Yeah, but I just I just love this Katang scene at the end. No, I, no, um, I think the show does, and I don't know if I agree that like the show overall hasn't done a great job with Katang. I would say maybe obviously in Island players isn't great, but like. Being upset, well, we'll yeah, but being that. upset with what a character's action doesn't necessarily mean that it's like, oh, they ruined. Yeah, me. yeah. Well, we'll 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 evaluate at that point. I think I just I think book one, great and yeah. Katara bonds not romantically. The stars of romantic build up. I think it's I think it's all been great. No, there's, they very much. It's very much. They have a crush. Uh, there's very much this Katara awareness that happens in the fortune teller. Right, like Katara, that is a good point. Katara gives Aang the kiss on the cheek here. I feel like that wouldn't happen unless she has that awareness of a romantic potential between them. Um, and maybe a romantic potential. Right, you compare the beginning of the fortune to her, Katara is just so unaware of Aang's crush that she's like, oh, good l- little guy like Momo to yeah. here, where she's specifically like uh, giving him yeah. some, you know, the romantic acknowledgement with the kiss on the cheek. So, th- yeah, that, that, I, I, yeah, that, that's a good, it's a good interplay with those episodes. How about how about uh, any any merit to the Zutara aspect no. of Bato? No. Give Zuko a kiss for me, Jeff. Are you, what's your ruling oh, on uh, any Zutara ness oh. of uh, of Bato? I didn't see any of consequence. <laughs> you're not you're not uh, buying June's uh, uh, evaluation. I think it was mainly like, well, I... for the dig. Like she was like, I he's she's just way too pretty for you, bro. Like. Yeah. Do you, do you think June's picking up on Zuko having feelings or something? Is that? No, I think she just likes making fun of Zuko and Iroh. Hmm. Yeah. He's fat. Ooh, yeah. She's or, or, yeah. Old and yeah and uh, grumpy. He's yeah. just so also Zuko it, is so yeah. angry and in love with his honor that he can't possibly have. There's no room for anything else. Yeah, I'm interested to see how the the May stuff and yeah, well, Mel talked about the uh, I already forgot her name again, the uh, Cave of Two Lovers uh, w- girl, and then uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, we'll see, and then uh, you'll you'll see, the one, the baby? Uh, and then like, tales, what? and then tales of Bossing Say, and you know as well. Oh, oh, the um, tea girl. Tea girl, yeah, I feel like we're gonna get. Well, I don't know why we keep trying to talk about stuff that we're gonna eventually get to. So, well, okay. What else in in Bato? That's that's all I had for Bato. Anything else from you guys? Only one was I did a, a nice rehash of the classic. Sokka tells a joke, silence, and then awkward cough moment. <laughs> so good. It's a yes. It's a good format. Um, because he stinks so much. <laughs> so good. Oh yeah, one one thing. Uh, this this also happens in the next in the deserter. So I want to do talk about uh, overall. One thing that I do not like from Avatar, it's just the consequence of it being like a kid show. 
the suspense uh, commercial break. Yes. Yeah, oh my god, like, I'm so sick of it. Like the 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 sister being like, uh, "I caught you," and then like, uh, yes. oh, but I don't know if that was at the commercial. That wasn't. Uh, no, that was yeah, just no. a dumb. That was just annoying. Just like, oh but yeah, just just commercial break, suspense. Oh, and actually, it was nothing yeah, right at that. Other, you know, that that or, is a constant. It's or like something happens, commercial break, and then. A little bit of exposition after the break to remind everyone what just happened. Yes. Yeah, they yeah. repeat something, and yeah, yeah. Annoying. Not it's it's a uh, an annoying consequence of the format overall. I don't remember, you know, so far at least, Avatar has not had a ton of issues with them. We'll we'll see as we keep going, but there have definitely been a few annoying ones. Um, you just have to kind. Of, I do think stuff like that, you know, hasn't aged well. I guess because it's like if you're trying to get a friend to like binge Avatar as like a serious show, that type of stuff is a little bit of a roadblock. Because that is like clearly this wouldn't happen on like a Netflix drama or something like you know so um, I don't I don't know have we Delaney have we watched any shows that do that sort of repeating at the commercial thing I can't even remember like honestly over half of the stuff is streaming nowadays anyway that it doesn't apply so it's kind of hard to say the last thing we would have watched like that would have been like Star or Ladybug and a show like craig it, there's no commercial break in the episode too with yeah. those 11 minute episodes so right it was like steven universe like we wouldn't that wouldn't yeah so i guess like star or yeah Lo- the ladybug doesn't do that i don't think so um owl, uh, yeah owl house yeah as far as like doing the exposition to repeat what just happened i actually don't remember avatar doing that that much except for the deserter was the, was the standout when mm, okay. like you burned my sister commercial break you burned yeah, my sister. Yeah. Burned my sister. Yeah, I was like, bro. Which, granted, maybe he's like repeating it because it's so bad. Like, <laughs> he said it twice. He said it twice. That's how bad it was. Yeah, I don't really blame the episodes for that type of thing. It's just like, yeah, kind of just what has to happen here. Um, but no, I agree. <laughs> Deserter is when I wrote it down in my notes, so I guess it did stand out <laughs> to me that. Uh, hey, yeah. Um, okay, so let's let's talk Deserter. Um, I gotta say, I I thought this was a very. Uh, <laughs> heady intellectual avatar episode or at least it uh, kind of Dong had like i'm just gonna be dramatic the whole time Dong Dong just... is he all he does is talk in platitudes it's... yes uh, talk in uh he has like very like uh, light high level things to say about firebending and the state of the world and he's talking um, to like, this 12 year old and ang's just like i just want to fire <laughs> out of my hands bro and he even says something to guitar and guitar is like that's cool bro like it's like what are you saying I you know I like Song Song's like I wish I was a waterbender because all I do is destroying. Yeah. Like, okay. Dude. I did I did really like that that conversation after the the burn here. I, like I said, I actually think this episode's pretty pretty great. Um, it is a little like uh, non emotional. It's just like very like heady and and uh, like emotional things happen, but it's it's again it's very fast. Um, but there's great Zhao stuff too. I, I think Zhang Zhang's a very standout early character, even though I didn't remember. He had a lot of lines that I was like, oh yeah, that that's an iconic Zhang Zhang line. Maybe it's cause they're just because they're in our quote lodge. Uh, but uh, <laughs> even that Oaf knows to concentrate on what he's doing. I was like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a highlight. He had another yes. one too. Um, Only a fool seeks his own destruction. I, you know, I, I think, I think there's some, some ones that, that really clicked for me <laughs> hearing Zhang Zhang say them back. Um, also, this t- t- like I said, Tim Hedrick's first episode, uh, obviously a very important writer in Avatar. It, this very much felt like a Tim Hedrick episode to me, honestly. So that led that I was like, okay, this was this makes sense, his origins. And I feel like Mike and Brian really liked what he was giving here, and uh, he's a very prominent source in Avatar and Korra coming up. So um, th- just the fire, like there's there's the philosophical aspect of it. There's the seeing the Fire Nation stuff that I think is also very successful. There's Zhao. I think this is a great, very successful Zhao episode. That villain's like Zhao's in it. It's the best episode it's, ever. I, I mean, this is in your uh, top. Got to be in your top three Zhao ep- episode. Well, top four. Top four. I mean, obviously you have to include the Siege of the North, Dylan. Like, Siege of the North. I mean, this episode. He kills the moon, Dylan. Like the Blue Spirit. <laughs> and Southern Air Temple, right? Those are your those are your Zhao four, I would say. Um, the, he's in he's in the Solstice Part One and Two, but whatever. Um, the, I think he's great here. He's he's so he's at his most Zhao, I guess, in some ways. It um, is pretty good when he sets his own boats on fire. It's pretty good. Yeah, your own ship has set. Also, sail. the extremely no. anti-dramatic reveal that Zhao was a student. 
Yes, the Zhang Zhang student. Um, very the acolyte in this episode. Uh, but uh, we all, okay, so let's, I'll go through it. Start at the Fire Days Festival. Um, I didn't remember, but there's some good stuff here. I, I, Katara switches the happy and sad masks on Hilarious. Aang and Sokka. I thought that was funny. Appa tries to hide like, under the porch. Yeah, yes. so the Appa hiding him. Yeah. We get the Fire Lord puppet show. I forgot about that, too. <laughs> he just burns the puppet. It just burns into a crisp. I was like, that's dark. We get this magician and Aang like uh can't help himself. I'm like, guys, this is this is not real. Calm down. What are you doing? Oh, okay, we have fl- f- flaming fire flakes. Do that, does that come up again? I feel like it does. I don't know. Maybe I feel like it does. Flamio. Do we, we don't yeah. say Flamio Hotman in this. Flamio episode, Hotman. We'll say we don't say that here. So I the just are so- there's a a shot that point that jumped out to me during the magician show. Uh, it looks like they've got like floor lighting uh, in this shot. Oh, interesting! It, it's it, one of those it like does, it, uh, it looks like floor lighting. It, it, oh, it does. It does look like a light on the side. Um, at first, I was like, "Is this part of the magician act? Like, does something come up out of it?" Um, but it does look like lighting. There's a it's firebender funny. under there, and he's just like. Oh. Mm. Well, they do. Uh, they do fire fireflies, right? And uh, in oh, in the yeah. next episode, yeah. So yeah. maybe it's something like that. Some light light source like that. It's a good catch there. Um, we get uh, oh Che. Um, uh, I did not remember him at all. I also mm-hmm. thought his name was Jay when we were watching, but it's Che. <laughs> I swear. Uh, they escape that with him. The they're awful. Just full disclosure, like they're so bad. What was like, awful? The Netflix um, oh. subtitles. Everything is wrong. Oh, okay. Things are spelled. They're like wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like they're just bad. That's not. They're not real good. bad. That's not good. It was quite, I would say this is probably the, I don't mean, I did watch a bunch of episodes, but I, like, some of these episodes were, like, the worst offenders. <laughs> like, of subtitles-wise, they really got to get the official subtitles there. They were really bad. Uh, we get the smoke bomb set off fireworks. I thought that was cool, too. At the, in general, this is this is a Fire Nation colony, this town. This yes. is, we previously talked about in Jet, I we were, there's a lot of confusion. Is this a colony? Is this an Earth Kingdom town? It is still unclear, but it's probably at least partly an actual Earth Kingdom town. This is a full-on Fire Nation colony here. Yes. I noticed, like during their escape, they jumped through a hole in the wall, like that looked like it was put there by some combat, some invasion. So maybe this is an mm. occupied town. Maybe. Okay, could could be an occupied. I, I get the impression it's all Firebenders, but oh, maybe those. I, are just I, the oh, it's probably all Firebenders, but they might have like taken over from an old. They took over an existing town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah unfortunately, yeah. So. I also think this episode's important in setting up that concept, which I'm eager to track throughout the... I mean, I've been trying to track, and it's there's not a lot here so far, but yeah, just the fact that not it's not just that they're invading and, like, there's, like, a war. They're, like, literally, like, tra- oh, invading right. and establishing colonies and occupying, right? Yeah. So, um... That's, and, and, it re- and, that, and that's something that the comics got into afterwards, right? Like, as far as unwinding all that? I think a little bit more, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the comics start to be about dealing with the colonies and politically. Yeah, because, like, the Earth King is like, get them all out. And it's like, okay, to be fair, there's people who've lived here. And, like, there are, like, Fire Nation Earth Kingdom families. Right. So, inter- so interesting funny. stuff. Um, and uh, I think I think it's, again, uh, talked about uh, in Northern Air Temple some more, too. Because uh, yeah. they the northern the mechanist people were refugees um that was after a flood though so maybe not as a result of the fire nation yeah that was yeah i thought that was interesting mm-hmm. that is interesting um yeah with uh we talk about uh introduce jong 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 says ang's not ready starts talking in platitudes and um okay here's an interesting thing we gotta talk about roku comes uh <laughs> and talks to jong jong you're gonna do what I say, old man. He just tells him you got training. What's going on here with with Roku? The mechanics of this. Um, uh, Roku is uh, well, Roku is Aang, so Roku can just do this whenever he wants. Um, you, you get I, the impression that Roku did not man. physically manifest. He appeared in Zhang Zhang's head. Is that what happened? Yes. I think he physically manifested. But there was either a tree. way. Like okay, in, in, yeah. There a, There's it, some sort of spirit world environment, right? Like. True. Because, but then when Roku comes, when Zhang Zhang comes out of the vision, it's like Ang's like, "Yay!" Like Im- implying he was Ang the whole time, or Ang thought he was Ang the whole time. I think it's unclear that because, like, I don't think Ang would know. Does this happen again? 
the, the avatar, thing is, like, it happens, like, but it's like, well, it's like when he became Roku in the temple. Like, I don't know. I don't know if this happens again. The the only thing I think of is is uh, Kyoshi and Avatar yeah. days. So we're gonna see the. I guess I guess, but there she is physically. That is a result of Aang going into the Avatar state, I believe. And Aang can talk like, about when he get there. And and Aang can tell something has happened. Like he's woo woozy. Yes. Yes, Aang taught. Yeah, yeah. so th- that's this right. So it's like in the Avatar state, you, Aang can turn into past life, I guess. Although they're inconsistent, I feel like this. This to me, I feel like this never will happen before again. You know, like he just appears as yeah. someone else. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say it works dramatically, and like, it, like it has an effect on Zhang Zhang. It fits the like mood of the episode, which again is very dramatic and serious. And st- like, I, I like all that. It just mechanically is baffling is baffling oh here's a here's a thought what if it didn't actually happen and he's just mad right i think um you know also, like, that sort of explanation i know Zhang, i don't think Zhang Zhang's this old but like it kind of almost implies that he knew roku right yeah but like, kind of implies it a little bit which doesn't really make a lot of sense but like i don't know yeah, yeah. um he res- clearly respected Roku as like a Fire Nation figure. Um, I guess a potential. He, he probably relates to him as someone who went against the the Fire Lord, right? Um, and to be clear, I don't actually think it didn't happen. That's other just the fun. Oh yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. The, the, this moment took me out. Of it. <laughs> it's like what's it's like what's going on. Uh, the, the the scale of it like was interesting to me when he said. I have mastered the elements a thousand times in a thousand lifetimes. Like, think of like how much like if you, if you consider the avatar as one person who has multiple lives, like how much work that person has done and will do forever. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's, and that's then Ang does it in like six months, just because you know yeah. YOLO. NBD. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 it's it, it's 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 still a fun scene. So then we start to get uh, Zhang Zhang training Ang. Um, any highlights from the Zhang Zhang lessons? Well, I just, it's funny. And like, I don't like, for a show that's about mastering all the elements, we really don't get a lot of these, like, training montages. Yeah. You know, like, and it's kind of interesting because it's like, this what the whole thing, the whole, like, focal point of the show is Aang must master all the elements before summer's end. But it's like, Aang spends, like, so very little time (laughs) training. (laughs) Yeah, no, and and I I forgot that he had early firebending training, and he firebends yeah. in this he episode. He does. One thing that I I'm not sure how to feel about it at the time, but so he he's impatient, right? And he gets scolded by Zhang Zhang, and then the next morning Zhang Zhang comes out of his tent and Aang's there, clearly doing an airbender thing, just meditating. Like, I don't know. I feel like if Aang was a bit more serious about demonstrating. That he was into it, he would have been doing a firebending pose that whole time. Uh, he tried. And, well, I mean, he didn't try and do the firebending. That's what I mean. Like, but yeah, he, he he tried to be. I think he was authentic about it. Just like yeah, he was trying to be all chill. Yeah, and then immediately when he didn't get his way, he's like, "Nope, I'm gonna firebend." <sighs> yeah, so he does the leaf thing, and uh, well, he's he breathing exercises on the mountain. That was a highlight, um, and. Uh, keep the the he makes fire from the flame on the leaf and then with those like the fire ring and hurts katara yeah i, I think i think a very effective scene um yeah i didn't rem- i didn't really remember this but uh very traumatic mm-hmm. from a katanga perspective and more on um, talk of like like later um some of it is to egg on Zhao, but jean jacques like i have never seen such raw power like mm. yes yes which is, is. Which is not, i'd like that too yeah and Zhang Zhang um, wasn't even there for the firebending. He could have just, he just could tell. He could just tell, yeah. What do you guys think of Zhang Zhang as a character in this episode? I think I agree that he'd spoken a lot of platitudes, but I think it would have been really interesting to expand on that. Like when he said, you know, we firebenders are cursed because we have this power and we try and keep it in, but eventually we are torn apart. He says as if it's a universal truth that all firebenders will eventually be torn apart. Yeah. Like, interesting so say more like i want to see where this mm-hmm. goes well it's interesting too it's like is this really the nature of fire is it more like your like nation and like your culture and like what you've created right a lot of interesting ideas here i agree with delaney that 
he's meditating on the nature of fire, but I feel like this is the show fully exploring the circumstances of the, the Hundred Years' War and where where the show finds itself. It's like, uh, what is a, a soul like Zhang Zhang going to react to what his nation does and what his fire has done to the world and the pain it's inflicted? So I think it's more of a reaction of what the firebenders have done. And he is, like, he's, a, he's a deserter. Like, he left. And that's why. And, they, and I think, the, you know, the episode it, uh, does expand on that really well, I think. Um, but yeah, I, I, I feel they like... Were I, like with this yeah i feel like i talked about this with past episodes but i'll have it within the premiere i feel like avatar does spend a lot of time like exploring the 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 room in the situation of here's where the war is at here's where the nations are at this is the state of the world right now let's dig into what this means for this group and this group and this character this character's reaction their past trauma to the war this is Zhang Zhang's reaction to the war um but what what would a firebender who disagrees with them do what would a firebender like what's Zuko's reaction going to be to what they're doing so I you know again just full the, them exploring the space of of the the setup of the show, the building of the mythology. There's, there is so much to like in season one. I, I feel like, you know, not, not to get too ahead of ourselves, but uh, we've in the past had the hot take that season one of Avatar, not the worst season of Avatar, maybe even the second best season of Avatar. I feel a little justified in that so far. The season's been really good. There's a lot to like here, I think. Yes. Also, it's a bit of a throwaway line, but even like, you know, he, he was the first person to leave the army and live. Yeah, true. Like they hunt them down and kill them. Like that's that's, that's a lot. Um. So well, what happens after the burning? So Katara, she discovers healing. Um. So and we have the Jung Jung Katara scene, which we talked about. He said it was a bur- a burning curse. Um. Does Katara discover healing too quickly? Um. I mean, perhaps. Granted, I don't know. I feel like it's a good intro because I mean, we get more into it in more into it right in soon. Finale. It's also very- at the at the end, she says, I guess I always uh, knew how to do this or I guess I always had this. That's kind of the show's explanation for why it happened so far. I mean, it makes sense in that, like, it's a natural ability. Well, I mean, Zhang Zhang says some just some waterbenders can do this. So, I mean, it makes mm-hmm. sense that, like, it's just something or, you know, it just came so naturally to her. It is also immediately followed up with Sokka being like, OK, what about this time or this time? Like, could you have been like a little more helpful, which is like really funny. Yes, yeah. with the two fish hooks. Yeah, like, you're a genius. Like, good job. <laughs> I think it's kind of sad that, like, the fact that she didn't know about healing, apparently, like, and yet it's all a thing up in the Northern Tribe, yeah, kind of yeah. says what kind of the, the impact was of taking all the water minutes away from the Southern Water Tribe. Yes. And then also... Like, oh, just, look what you've forgotten. Sorry. And also, like, the cultural difference between the North, the North, the North and the South, like... As far as we know, like, I mean, there's maybe a couple other villages on the South Pole. I doubt it. As far as we know, this is it. It's this tiny little village. Yeah. And, and the impact of the, the Fire Nation destruction on that. Yeah. Yeah, culturally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but Katara, Katara healing, ama- amazing, iconic aspect of the show and bending. And I think it's a good introduction here. It's fast. Again, I think you know as far as simply show's... the best in the show they can only do so much they have to just they're like sorry katara can do it all so we have to the show does rely a little bit on Aang katara naturally gifted as she says but uh so i do think you know to given the format of i will say and this they're... is like what the show does which is what you know when we were doing our pitches you know like different ideas because i mean that's what happens you have the avatar and all of his best friends are the best benders ever that's mm-hmm. how we end up with, I mean, honestly, Mako gets a little shafted. Like, yeah, he can bend lightning, but, like, other people can do. Meanwhile, Bolin invents a new form of earthbending. So. I forgot about that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you're reminding me. <laughs> that's, that's the first time I've heard this. You're telling me just now. You're no. welcome. Uh, the, uh, uh, the healing. Uh, oh, I remember. Zhang Zhang. Here's, uh, you sp- speaking of the pitch podcast that we did. I want to see the Zhang Zhang backstory show. I yes. want to see the miniseries on uh, Zhang Zhang's history here. Well, there's a couple of these. We were talking about, well, it's like, we're talking about, like, what did Miyuki do? I want some of these, like, in between. What's yeah. going on? Well, I don't think we're getting a Miyuki show. No, right? I know. It's well, I mean, show. like, you know, what if it was, like, Avatar hidden stories? And if we literally, yeah. even if we went back in time, and it was like, we're going to do, we're going to literally, like, 
every episode is like, this is what's happening in the world while Aang and Katar and Sokka are doing this. Like, to revisit, yeah. like, I think that'd be really cool. Like, what was going yeah. on when this was happening? Yeah, stuff that was happening at this time. I think that would be fun. But, but no, I, I'm just, I'm, even though, and like, is Zhang Zhang the strongest character? Like, no, but I, I, I'm fascinated by him. I well, think it'd be I mean, very interesting. He's interesting, and we never, we literally never see, actually, wait, no, is he a White Lotus? Oh, Does he come maybe back we see him in the White Lotus. Seconds? Yeah, he might come back for two seconds. And like let's, another let's white the lotus show. Yeah. Come on. He obviously he obviously should be a white lotus. I think he so. is. Um appearances. Book one water, book three fire. Uh yeah, he's he's in the finale. That's okay. what I thought that he was a white lotus. You're okay. all welcome for pulling that and out of the deepest corner of my Thank you. You've saved us from some comments. There. Was... Look, we're rewatching <laughs> in order. Okay, okay we'll get there. there. Okay. Literally, like we watched this like forever ago. Okay, we're doing our best. Look. We should shout out Jake, uh, who I believe loves Zhang Zhang. I think was Zhang Zhang his profile picture. I love that. Uh, I don't remember, but I, I just remember Jake loves Zhang Zhang. I remember that that was like, uh, what, I don't know if I remember any other of his opinions, but. And Jake loves Zhang Zhang. And y'all like, that, think, like, these are little meow meows. These, these... two p. <laughs> 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 these grown fire little, nation fire nation grown men these are <laughs> yeah, meow meows. Yes. it's true he's my borbo admiral zhao look you gotta latch on to someone okay did he fall over no he's still no there. he's there um Good. oh he's oh my 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 oh, oh no, no no you see it in this okay i'm getting confused with all my i'm friends. in your house uh, I'm like, <laughs> yeah how do you know you can't see, it. You can <laughs> I'm, see him. I'm behind you i'm in your wall the people watching see him yeah, we'll we're trying we'll try to get Jake on, by the way, if, if you're curious. Uh is an attempt is being made. Okay. Um what else from this uh, that's that's it. Uh, then we get uh them at the end with uh Yeah, the, the them here Katara healing Aang's burn at the end on uh Zhao. Here's what I wrote down after seeing that scene at the end of this episode was these uh into a nighttime sky, like you know from the soundtrack, that those these scenes on op at the end, I feel like that's the most indicative of Avatar's just like quiet character moments that are so yes. well interspersed throughout the show like appa saddle has seen some things appa's this appa saddle scenes it's just like there's so many great ones but also there's several other camp scenes camp life scenes it's it's what we talked about what the netflix show is missing yes. but just to talk about this show like i feel like this is a huge reason why avatar is so successful these character moments that even in this chaotic, uh, not necessarily, kind of chaotic, very fast-paced, packed episode, The Deserter, we get this scene, this quiet character scene at the end. There's tons like it. Um, I there's just think... that familiarity. Like, they're, they've been together for, like, five ever, like... Even though it's been, like... And we're also all trauma-bonded because Zuko yeah. keeps trying to blow us up. How long's it been at this point? Two months? A month? Maybe longer. Maybe a little bit longer, but not that long um but yeah uh any other parts from the uh dessert you want to talk about either of you uh so it was a nice little uh easter egg that there's also a blue spirit wanted poster that they didn't focus on yes yes i, I remember that yes too. yes cool i i want to talk more about the characterization but i actually think there's a lot of it in the northern Night temple so let's do the northern Night temple first then we'll oh sorry we'll get to that part one more thing i really yes. liked was when the local uh, guards were reporting to Zhao, yes, I lost the avatar, but crime rates were way down. And <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Like the festival went off without a hitch, and it's just, it's just like a beam falls down behind them. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess we didn't really talk about the Ang Zhao fight. I mean, he makes him burn his ships. Ang does the taunts him with his butt. I'm Admiral. <laughs> I'm Admiral Zhao. Yeah, that's good. It's good stuff. Um. But yeah, just uh, just so destructive, Zhao. Good, just just good stuff here. Or Outsmarted by a twelve year old. Throwing a single blow, and he's like, "Well, you did. Oh, so good. Ten out mm. of." And no yeah, introspection. It's, it's... Oh, and then they're like, "Have fun walking home." <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> good, good Zhao stuff. <laughs> um, okay, Northern Air Temple. Uh, I had forgot about certainly forgot about this intro scene of the Airwalker stories with the storyteller. I was like, what? <laughs> I have no idea. What, like, the episode just, I was like, what's going on? Where are we? Like, yeah, I like Aang being like, I laugh at gravity all the time. I think that's. Yes. Ah, I thought it's yeah. interesting that, that apparently this, the storyteller, who's old enough to be someone's dad, has a great grandpappy. <laughs> so, 
That's a very healthy man there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, th uh, th throwing in, I think, some uh, fun, uh, exaggerated, yeah, character there. Yeah, no, but I agree. Um, we get to the Northern Air Temple. By the way, we mentioned uh, Angmington's championship, Sky Bison Polo. Um, I enjoy it as someone who's been watching the Olympics. Yeah, like, thro th the throw it in the Avatar World Olympics. Mm. I was. We should do it. Also, Air I was ball. Like, Air, we got air ball. I want to see some sky bison polo. That's obviously hilarious. pro bending. Pro bending, the best, the mm -hmm. most important sport most important that's ever sport. existed. Mm -hmm. We can bring back, um, God, no, I don't even remember the the rumble, the earth rumble. Oh, nice. oh yeah, we'll get there too. Yep, we got some wrestling. If they did like okay, I don't... figure skating with air bend or with with with, with water benders, that'd be pretty sick. There we go. We could do fire dancing. It can be like gymnastics. We can do whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Okay, let's get that going. Uh, we meet Teo. Uh, Aang's uh, gl gliding versus flying where Aang's showing off against Teo. Teo does the sky writing of Aang's like, unimpressed face. I think that's that pretty good. Really, I enjoyed that. That's, that's good. A little bit of uh, suspension of disbelief there because there's no mechanism for him to stop the smoke once it started. So. Okay, sure, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this episode gets into a lot of the mechanics of the technology, so I think it's fair. Uh, we're we're getting a lot into this. Um, the uh, what what do we think of Tao? How about in this episode? Uh, he's a sweetheart. I uh, love him. I don't yes. like he's just great. Um, I think he's better here than he was in the live action. Nothing against the actor, but like I just thought he was better here. I don't think there's a ton to his character here, but he's nice. Yeah, the, the, my favorite part of him was when he's like, he wants to go into the, or he's showing off the Air Temple uh, Sanctuary. He's like, I completely understand why you wouldn't let me in. I just wanted you to know it was here. Yeah, yeah. that's nice. Then he's like, it'd be super cool, though, if you let me in there, though, just for the rest. <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> he's just he, saying. he's sweet, that. and then also uh, he's, uh, he says, like, once uh, he discovers his dad uh, making weapons, he says, your invention is being used for murder. That stood yeah. out to me. They said murder. Yeah. Like, okay. Okay, Tao. How can I respect um, you? Yeah. Um, the uh, the the steampunk of if via version of the uh, Northern Air Temple. And uh, says, as apes through the murals. I was like, that's messed up, bro. That's, that was pretty mm. messed up. Yeah. That was the history of my people desecrated. Yeah. And Ang says there, Katara understands his pain, as I referenced earlier. Um, it was interesting that they. Uh, not not in a bad way or anything, but like they they showed off uh, Sokka really getting like digging this stuff like so better, uh, all the the mechanisms really get into his like his mechanical creative side. Yeah, I kind of think they almost like I mean I don't know. Obviously, Aang's very angry in this episode, and I think they do a lot with it. But I also think he ends up a little too nice at the end. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's 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 come back to that. Um, the uh, we the, the mechanist. What do we? Uh, mechanist is fun here. His we'll finger safe. Uh, his his finger safe knife sharpener. <laughs> Took three tries. Mm -hmm. That's good. Oh, good stuff. The thigh brows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never thought they'd grow back. Yep. He tells the story of uh, his people, who we don't really... I don't know if they're the mechanists. He's, Northern. like, dancing around. He's, like, doing, like, an interpretive dance. I'm yes. like, are you okay? Here? Like... <laughs> they're, re they're refugees after a flood. It hurt Teo, killed his mom. They're inspired by the gliders they found. A new life for a son in the air. Everyone's on equal ground. I, so I'm, i like, I kind of hate it a little bit. What? I'm also, like, I think you kind of made, like, Teo being disabled, like, all about you. Like, that's kind of, like, that's kind of how it felt. That's the show's knowledge, acknowledging of that, of him being disabled, yeah. is a, it's a way to make them all equal. Um, for 2008, it's probably, it's it's fine. <laughs> One, that Teo exists. 2005, uh, it was something, but it's something. Re that's really the only line about it in the entire episode. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not 100 sure how. Like, I don't know. I don't, I think by today's standards, it's like pretty not great. Um, Teo that like when Teo does like Teo does cool stuff. Teo like flies around. I think it's it's cool to see him in the show. Yeah, and then Sokka. I mean, they land and Sokka's like, oh my god, your wheelchair's so cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, we uh, how about Sokka and the mechanist? Uh, the 
they they find the natural gas and stuff. Sokka's character of him natural gas. This, they like they're like we're gonna do, yeah, we're gonna do rotten eggs. That's yeah. crazy. Sokka bonding with the mechanist in the inventing him hit the engineer Sokka aspect of his character. Which does it start here? Do we ever see any signs of this from Sokka before? I think we do. Mm, I there's somewhere. Like in, in in Solstice, he's inventive yeah. with the blasts. Yes, and then okay. also he has like previously. Um, I mean, he made his boomerang. True. Yeah, yeah, and I think the show talks about it more later, probably. Um, but you know, I think it connects well enough to his like uh, creative leadership aspect, which I do think the show is is starting to get into. I mean, we also saw that in 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 Bata the Water Tribe when he used mm-hmm. bending to beat the the dodge challenge. Yeah. Yes, true. Yeah, so th- I, I think I think big episodes for Sokka's character getting to where they want to be with him as a leader and, and like a creative leader, uh, and, you know, inventor. I, I think all of that stuff relates well enough. Um, but some, some big episodes here. C- kind of expanding beyond just the Sokka is right amongst weird people, which is largely a lot of his episodes before with uh, Jet and uh, Fortune Teller, yeah. you know. Like okay, he's right. He's 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 smart. Okay, I got that. But now you know, I think we're getting getting some more, some more depth to him. So I I think some good Sokka stuff here for sure. Honestly, a good a good episode for all the characters. Um, you know, Katara at least gets to ice bend the tanks and mm. and and some stuff there. Um, the uh, we get the you know the the fi- the sanctum and he's making the weapons for the, the year after moving there the the soldiers Rebel. found and then he offered his services. I, I I remember the mechanist being more evil. I guess in my mind he was yeah made, yeah he's like yeah okay he's he's being he's coerced he's directly coerced here right like the the guy they come up and check on him regularly and then they go to war immediately when he refuses. Yeah, they're like all right. Like I I'm glad that they didn't make him the bad guy like, he, i don't see he didn't have any good options there yeah i mean i mean i don't i don't think the show presents him as a great guy but i you know it's he's clearly not like a villain here so that that's kind of different from how i remembered it honestly i do think it's gonna be i don't know like there's also just like at the end where they find the balloon like i don't there's a lot of implications especially now as someone who has watched the show in its entirety how important that war balloon becomes yeah so the yeah the balloon stuff like, is fun final battle like yeah, Sokka's uh, working. The the war balloon starts working thanks to them with the lid on the hot air. Um, oh yeah, and then the oh yeah, this episode then starts to move very fast again about the pacing. It's like oh, he's he's coming, he's coming right now, and Aang's like go away, and then oh, now we're going to war, you know, like. Uh, yep. But the the emissary, this guy, um, and uh, yeah, at the end they get the the balloon with the uh, the gateway to many victories, right? So. I think that it would be fun to see the balloon again. How about the thoughts on the the big battle scene? A lot of bo- different types of bombs. Um, slime's like... fun. I enjoyed mm-hmm. that. Um, this battle went on like for way too long. Um, the ugly CGI tanks. I will say this is very the tanks are, they're they're very cool though. I the like I like the they're hideous, but like conceptually, um, this is something that I remember. Like this does stand out in my mind, and it's especially because this is how they invaded. Um, I think this is how they invaded the Southern Air Temple. Well, I, I don't know because, like, I got the sense, and this is the first time I got this sense upon this rewatch that the mechanist actually helped design those tanks in particular. Because... Yeah, no, yeah, you know, they said the but counterbalance thing. They said the, the the flipping for sure he did. We don't really know about the grappling hook type of thing. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I agree with Jeff that they give that gives you the impression that maybe the entirety of these tanks was designed by him. Yeah. Well, then, but... well, then you have to think about like, what about the drill? And like, it'll be interesting to track that technology with the drill too. Um, I think I think the the Fire Nation is probably not reliant entirely on this one guy for all of their like inventions. Even though that's the impression you get sometimes. But well, uh, yeah, what kind of stood out to me this episode was, you know, they were like, yeah, everything here runs on hot air. Yeah, well, that that's I mean, that's everything in the Fire Nation. Everything was run on steam. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jeff, any any uh, other highlights from the battle? Uh, I liked seeing Appa being utilized as a mobile uh, weapons depot. Yes. Supplies in the air. That was yes. Um, I 
they didn't really like show this, but it was interesting how much the landscape changed when they when they set off that that final mm-hmm. bomb. I was, you know, one thing they could have done if there was a different kind of show is they do that and then oh no, the entire air temple just falls off the side of the cliff because that's what I was because I mean there's that implication that like it's under like it's completely under the temple so you would think that like you were just blew up the whole temple so I don't know what that's about. Mm. Uh, also, I'm not quite sure where they got slime from. That's like introduced yes. in the last part of the episode. Is oh, it's a thing we have a lot of slime. Okay, why? Sure. Question. Well, I guess is that kind of like the green nastiness in that fountain? Is that what that is? I think there was the slime seemed more viscous, but yeah, is it related to blasting jelly? Who knows? Mm, hard to know. Um, is it, yeah, it is interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I I liked it overall. The, yeah, it was fun. Especially like the the end, the lead up to like, okay, we're, we're going to war, woo, and like all the planes are taken off. Yeah, nice. good moments. It's def- definitely like a high effort battle scene for them to to go to do, yeah. um, like, so like art- gonna... artistically. Because like obviously, there. like when I mean, this gets explored in the Netflix adaptation, but and also like I mean we don't see it, but the um you know this is kind of like the Airbender sighting back, like the spirit of the Airbenders kind mm-hmm. of. The spirit of the new airbenders from Korra. How many of these guys do you think are uh, got airbending in Korra? These guys' children. Mm. All of them, because seemingly everyone got they have the spirit of the airbenders, and they they get, apparently, yeah, there's a ton of new ones. So, yeah. Okay, that's what we should do in Korra. We should visit the Northern Air Temple and be like, "Or do y'all still live here? What's up? What are y'all doing?" Mm-hmm. I am curious. Um, I have a question. This was something I was thinking about. So I know we later we visit the Western Air Temple in book three. Do we go to the Eastern Air Temple? Yes, that's in book two. That's in book two? Okay. I think I remember this extremely vaguely. That'll be a fun surprise for me, unless I remember in the meantime. Okay. I was like, I'm pretty sure we went to all the temples. I just couldn't. We'll see. And that's where they were going to send Aang. And the Eastern Temple was all women, which was an interesting choice to send Aang to. Hmm. Yes, we have not gotten into that yet it's in yeah. the show, so that'll be interesting. Okay, um, and then the last thing is uh, at the ending is he's like, actually, I'm happy you guys made the temple your home. Boo, boo! Like you can be kind of okay with it, but I think you should have. You can be mad about this. Like you're allowed to be mad. Sarah said the show was uh, okay in colonialism with that line. Um, kind of. I mean, I think it's different. I think it's more like cultural appropriation. Right. I mean, that aspect of it, you know, just like, like erasing someone's history. Yeah, I think it's different. Like, <laughs> it's not like I mean, they didn't kick anybody out. It was empty. So I would say that's the main difference in colonialism. <laughs> like there there was no one there um, and there hadn't been for a long time. So that's, cultural, I mean, cultural. Uh, yeah. Take yeah. over. That yeah. Espionage. So that's like not cool. And then also like. Yeah, like you literally probably like, Yang should have said, "Okay, you guys can make this your home. Let's try to preserve. Let me work with you to preserve certain aspects." And then, which I, you know, the, and it's like episode doesn't have time to get into that, right? So yeah, it's like, could you maybe respect this place a little more? Don't like, knock over the wall for the thinner, the whatever that, that, that place was, right? Like, uh, let's yeah. not do that. So, uh, but Ang Ang ca- character wise, Ang coming around to like. Uh, letting go of things being exactly how it was in his time and um the the spirit of the airbenders being most important and him seeing that in Teo and these people i think all that works well though i really don't you know i think that's actually something like the first show called the last airbender i do think we kind of drop the ball a little bit on ex- granted it's ext- i mean it's an extremely heavy topic for a show that's targeted at seven-year-olds but to you know i think we kind of dropped the ball a little bit and i mean we touch on it but i think there's a lot more we could do or could have done with ang being the last airbender his and like, reaction to his the genocide of his people yeah, yeah certainly yeah and i think there's a bit i mean and also like i think we maybe focus a little too much on being the last airbender versus like the last of a culture that no longer exists which i think this episode is the one that this is the episode that gets yes. into this yeah and southern air temple so to be fair, two out of 20 in season one, which isn't a ton, but sometimes we've gotten into it. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then they're but, just like, well, Aang got mad, and then he got over it. But, like, mm, I think we could have done a little more. Yeah. No, I, I think if if they were not making the show with uh, a young audience in mind, it's the type of thing they would have gotten into more. Also, Aang is young, though, and it's a lot to, for a show to well, get so much I, into oh, that absolutely. with him. I do. I mean, it is something we could get more into as, you know, with these movies. And I do think there's a little bit of there's some there's some middle ground between like Tenzin's like, I'm trying to repopulate this nation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what we do, we have the air air acolytes and not even bringing up the fact that they're just like, we're going to bring airbending back into the world. But, you know, I think there's some place in the middle where we need more of that, like exploring more Aang, you know, as an adult and also trying to, like, share this culture with the world and, like... Yeah, maybe, kind of... o- yeah, older Aang getting into that after Avatar ends. I'd love to see that. Yeah. And I think we talk about air a- the, air- the Air Acolytes in Korra, they are restoring the temples. Like, I think that is a thing. Getting more with the Air Acolytes. I wonder if we'll see this in the movie. How about that? If we're seeing I would love it. Why older not? Aang, but not Korra times. So that'd yes. be fun. I'm sure we won't get into that too much. And if it's just, I know he's so busy. There is literally so much that has to be done. But like, yeah. Anything else from the Northern Air Temple? Eating bugs in the air. Yeah, that was funny. That was really funny. Like she just keeps going back and forth. It was is pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Um, the hermit crabs were scary. Mm. I thought it was a spider at first. Yeah, they're they're like the creatures live on in the temple, but they only show the crabs. Like, uh, where the, what else we got? Yeah. Momo, also, like, hey, thanks. crabs. My entire people were wiped out. I'm gonna be really happy that this <laughs> hermit, hermit crabs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad there's hermit crabs. Thanks, guys. I do like like the analogy with the hermit crab, but it's also like okay. Yeah, no. It's it's, it's interesting. I would like to see more creatures. Uh, maybe they they had more creatures, but they all were eaten by the new occupants. You make a good point. We eaten by momos if they're more mm. too. Uh, yeah, more, more from the air. T- I agree. More from the air temples would be nice. So I want to see how the other air temple episodes go. Not um, just me that like they were like, yeah, we just found more flying bison. and they were hiding. Oh, gosh, I forgot. about that. <laughs> oh, my God. So I'm just like, all right. See if, we'll see if we see any signs of when where the other bison are, because I was I was going to say eaten by Appa, but I'm like, oh, there's only one Appa. But that's only like, no, actually, they retcons that. Yeah, oh, thanks for reminding me that you're they... welcome. So I guess maybe the other creatures are at this time being eaten by the bison that are hiding. Sure. As soon as I remembered, I had to tell you. So you're welcome. If I had to suffer, everyone has to suffer. I mean, do you want me to bring up the other thing from Korra? No, no, sorry. Look, I guess enjoy it right now. We don't have to do it again. Turn around and start playing. (sighs) No, it's not. Dylan's different. Dylan, like, tortures me every podcast. So, like, I I can torture back. It's different. I'll restrain myself. Okay, well, this last topic, I mean, we can talk about, see if there's any fandom stuff. I have been, Aang, Katara, and Sokka's characterization in Avatar before Toph joins them in book two. Um... I think this is the prime to- opportune time to talk about it before the kind of, we'll have a lot to talk about with the finale, you know, and it's less. I mean, I think there's to be up to be fair, a ton of Katara character stuff coming up that we haven't seen in book one yet. But um, we've talked a lot on this series about Katara's really varied characterization. We talked in this episode about Sokka's characterization. Now, these are these episodes are really good for it. A ton of great Aang stuff. Um, you know, Delaney, how how do you, like there's only three kind of main main characters to serve here before Toph. Obviously, there's Zuko and Arrow stuff. How 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 have you uh, been impressed or uh, not impressed by the show's characterization handling in book one? Um, I think it's all been very good. I think we do get, we get a lot of different like facets of all of them really. Um, we get you know a lot of reminders that they're just a bunch of kids. We also get you know kind of the roles that they will assume. Um, Katara is very much like Sokka thinks he's the leader, but he's not. Um, granted, Sokka does, you know, Sokka, you know, is the, the strategist, Katara is the heart, and then, you know, Aang um, is like the whole reason we're here. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I don't think I appreciated as much like how goofy Aang is, because it's kind of sad, like, as we go on. Like, book three is like very serious thing. He loses a lot of his, like, you know, I mean, he died, so, you know, that happens. Mm-hmm. 
I know I've just I've really enjoyed it and all well really what you're talking about with Toph kind of just reminded me like kind of how they, they'll change a little bit because like we get this we get this new character and Sokka it kind of becomes like oh we have another little kid we gotta like and Sokka's like protective and then Katara has to like go into mom mode because Toph is like literally the worst <laughs> and then um but it's funny and then of course and then of course famously Katara and Toph have to like fist fight each other every other episode there's fun stuff coming up it's good stuff um but also like they're all in cahoots so it's interesting like i think this like the early days is fun they're they're figuring stuff out but they are they really are and i think that's also something that i mean obviously top becomes part of the family and then eventually zuko but you know these are like the original trio and like you can't really like challenge that like how close they are like that, they must really have, are. that must have taken a lot for you to say, being a Toph stan, that to respect it, it the original hurt. trio. Well, Toph, it's kind of like, I think, you know, obviously, if you ignoring the fact that, like, Aang literally marries Katara, but, like, there is very much this more, like, familial bond, I think. And, I mean, and, I mean, obviously, Toph doesn't have a great home life, but, like, Katara, Sokka, and Aang, like, literally don't have any family. Like, they haven't seen Hakoda in two years. Um, Aang is, you know, the last airbender. And then um, even when they do see Hakoda, like, 25 years from now, like, he, like it's not like he's there. <laughs> like... Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, it's got, yeah, gotten into a lot of... Jeff, I what? Think I... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. We'll, we'll come back to you. Jeff, what's, what's your, what stands out to you looking back on what we've seen from season one with characterization of either any of those three? Uh, um... I don't know. They, they, uh, I think these episodes give them an opportunity to, 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 to grow. Like, uh, um, like now it's contrived, right? In, 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 in Bato, the water tribe, right? We have this like situation, uh, that Aang wouldn't have normally put himself into, but then he, they, they move past it. Uh, I like how they're, giving opportunities for these different characters to step into their roles. Yeah. Um, no complaints here, I guess. Yeah. I, I've, 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 you know, I think it's easy to look at it. Toph coming in such a strong character and say, maybe the show needed Toph and book one wasn't as good. And I just think the characterization this season is so strong. I mean, I'm eager to see when Toph is added. I know there's some iconic stuff with her in the mix as well, but Every all three of these characters get a ton of great material here. Um, you know, I maybe Sokka is slightly lagging behind at this point, but these episodes bring him a long way that we're talking about right now. Katara, uh, you know, we've talked about is her is she too all over the place? But there's so much stuff for her throughout book one. I'm I'm very pleased looking back with with all all the stuff she gets to do here, and the best material arguably is still yet to come with the finale. And a lot of great Aang material as 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 well. Um, even with the hiding the letter stuff, you know, he gets a lot. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, I think it's less of a we need to recap everything we've talked about on the series, but just acknowledging, like, it's a really great character season, really good character show. Um, did we need... You know, uh, uh, is it blasphemous to say we didn't need Toph? Like, we could have done the show without Toph? It doesn't mean that she wasn't adding a ton to the mix, but I think there's a version of Avatar with the three of the with the three of them that is still great. Yeah, well, I think I think something people take for granted is that, like, especially now with like the current like animation landscape, is that it's or actually live action too. These three characters have more than just one defining trait; like, they are fully fleshed out characters, and yeah. we see these different facets of all of them. Um, we get that with Toph as well, but like, and this is something Korra struggled with, and I think it's a main reason why people failed to connect with Korra the character. Which, granted, I love Korra, and Korra grows so much as a character over three seasons. Uh, I mean, over four seasons, but the characters in Korra are very one-dimensional. I think at a lot of the time, and Korra is really the only one who really gets. We explore Sami some. Um, but we really don't get. We'll, we'll get into it when we get to Korra. But yeah, but actually. we just we really don't get to with them what we get with. It doesn't really. It doesn't feel like it. That looking back at no, it. No, with Aang, yeah, yeah, like it's. 
and you know we could say we deal with more mature things in Korra, but like, I mean, just the characterization we get with Aang, Sokka, and Katara is very different. And I and just comparing with other shows, like these are I mean these are fully fledged characters, and we're in we're in book one. And if the show like if the show one would it have been the greatest thing ever? No, but it still would have been I think a landmark you know, incredible, like, characterization and story, and then we're, we're, and we're talking about, like, how do they, how we're checking in with them, because we know where they end up. And even then, like, I mean, from episode one to, you know, we're not even to the finale yet, and it's like, these are fleshed out characters. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, I, yeah, I've just, I've the, those are probably the aspects of season one I've been impressed most with heading into the finale. I think like it's I said, easy the world to take for granted, like, because we've already watched it or, you know, I know what happens, like where we end up. Well, we had to start somewhere. And I think. Like, right. Really right. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. The, it's revisiting the foundations, honestly, has been very uh, worthwhile. The the world building and the characterization has uh, just stood out so much to me this season. The build okay. of the franchise. <laughs> Yes, a great a, what great building blocks it was and excited to see it conclude with the Northern Water Tribe. Delaney and Jeff, you, your guys last one on book one. I want to give you both the chance to bring up anything uh, fandom wise, uh, just topics about Avatar, anything on your minds from uh, book one or any memories just you've been thinking about at this time. Delaney, have you been holding on to anything here? I don't think so. I will say I think I just I've all you know, in my head, I just think about book three a lot more because I, that's my favorite season. I love a lot of the episodes in book three, but I mean, book one has been a joy to watch and I just, Avatar is just great. And you know, what I was talking about, like this, the show is just really solid and to watch like everything start. And um, I find, I do find watching things to be a chore sometimes. And even though it can be hard to get me to sit down and watch something, I, I mean, I started watching Avatar and I didn't stop until I got to like my, my starting, my stopping point, you know, like I, it's so much fun to watch. And even though I know everything that happens, I'm like, oh, gasping at things and just a fun experience. Nice. Such a shock. We'll see if you have the same reaction to Korra Book 1, Korra Book oh, 2. Oh, don't even... Okay, Korra Book 1, sure. Korra Book 2, I don't even... We'll see. <laughs> Maybe we'll love it this time. What if we loved Korra Book I mean, 2, episodes 1 to well, 7? or What if we loved those episodes? I don't... I mean, I mean, am I excited for, like, the dubstep later? What if they were the best episodes we've ever seen? That's, Wouldn't that be that's great? Not, that's not happening. That's, also, I've seen Korra way more than I've seen Avatar, and I, I'm, like, not... I'm not pumped. Don't you miss Desna and Eska? <laughs> okay. <laughs> when you like completely forget they exist because they like. <laughs> right. So it's like, somehow some of the most obscure, even though they're in many episodes and they're good. They're like fun characters, yeah. but somehow super obscure. And, like, yeah, I mean, we've been talking. We, we've been talking about like great characterization of, of these three in, in season one, but like those two is incredible. Off the charts. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> they, like they even like okay. Desna's like upset. I don't, actually, I don't remember which one's the boy. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't but remember they're like anything. obsessed with Bolin, like. Oh yeah, yeah. Es es Eska, or it was, uh, and she's Aubrey Plaza. That's all I know. Okay, uh, Jeff, anything you want to bring up here? Um, just that it's been a really fun experience uh, doing this these episodes. I um, I find that like watching for fun is a little bit different than watching because oh wait I need to like pay attention because we're going to talk about these in depth and things which just pass right by uh in the former tend to like it's like oh wait didn't notice this never noticed that so it's been fun um so yeah like street fighter like i'm like he's right there mm. they just <laughs> mm -hmm. they put street fighter in here you guys are picking up on these things that's good yes well i, I agree it's been fun we got one more coming up and northern water tribe let us know all your thoughts on these three episodes, what you thought of our discussion here, anywhere where you're listening, leave a comment. You could leave an iTunes review. That would be great as well. And you, if you want early access to these uh, from the Spirit World Rewatch podcast, you can consider supporting us via Patreon at patreon.com slash overlyanimated. Thanks to our current patrons, especially our patron podcast, Carter. And thanks always to our patron executive producer, Steve Michael and Phonician. One more coming up weekly here for book one on last three episodes of the show. Very excited to get into all that. What are we going to end on here? 
I always forget about okay. it and right until I the just end. start screaming Zhao the Moon Slayer, but that doesn't happen. That's not so. yet. Not yet, Delaney. Not yet. What do, mm. what, what, what do we talk about in these episodes? Oh, I don't know. June. Yeah, I mean, there's June. Mm. Was there any references? You gotta keep track as you're gone, but I, I, I'm out of still out of oh, practice. The thing is, like these weren't like hilarious episodes. Like I mean, they're great, but it's not like. Yeah, I'm looking back. Um, I mean, June, June had some angry boy and Uncle Lazy. We could just end on June. That's that's easier. Okay. Zutaro real. Give Zuko a kiss for me. Let's end on Zutaro real. I refuse. I'll okay. Up. Okay. Uh, we won't do it. Okay. Thank you guys for listening. We'll end on June. One, two, three. June. June. She's so pretty.